is a blockchain effectively can become a market infrastructure behind other market service providers, either an FMI or a bank. We're here at Bergenstock 2016 and joining me today is Colin Platt. Great, thank you very much for having me. So the advances and the number of users of the blockchain are growing every day. Can you please explain the distributed ledger technology? Yeah, so um, what we look at distributed ledger technology or blockchain as is um, it's really a new paradigm for two, two factors. First is it's a peer-to-peer -peer technology that's very secure. The second thing, and this is the really innovative part about it, is it's the first thing that allows us to have a finite source of something in a digital medium. And what I mean by that is, unlike emails, if I send you an email, I can't control what happens after that. Um, this, you can only have one owner at any time, and we can control that without needing a central party, which is very different from other mediums we look at, like uh, money, where it needs to go through a bank or a central bank. So how will this technology be implemented into the market? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So this, this happens kind of at a few different levels. Um, if we look at the original use cases, these are cryptocurrencies, things like Bitcoin. Um, they're very much focused on how can I disintermediate? Um, how can I disrupt? And uh, these happen on open blockchain. This, is, this means we don't really know who's involved and anybody else can join. And it's great for a few things like what Bitcoin was created for, which is an uncensorable kind of money. It's very much internet money. Um, you don't need a bank. You don't need a central bank. You don't have the idea of monetary policy that can be um, eased or tightened. Uh, it's a very good payments mechanism for certain uses. However, it has a lot of drawbacks. People have been building off of these technologies and they've had to deal with these drawbacks as well as some of the, the pros on it. And I think we've seen um, that it's really evolved in a few niches and new technologies that have piggybacked off this idea have evolved there as well, where it's unstoppable money, unstoppable computer programs that can move money and function in a lot of ways like our financial industry. Now, in the financial industry, uh, where we are hearing a lot of hype around blockchain, some of it deserves, some of it really over the top. Um, people are looking at the idea of a private blockchain. It's still a peer-to-peer -peer network that's very secure, and we still have a finite quantity and ownership inside of this, in a very secure way, but you need to be onboarded, which means you have things like KYC. You may have um, ongoing requirements to regulators, to um, intermediaries of some sort, be it a bank, be it a central counterparty, uh, be it a CSD. And what we're, I think we're going to start to see is um, on two factors. First, an initial uptake on products where there isn't really a strong market structure. Um, we've seen NASDAQ's Link product came out last year. What this is is a private market, so we can move pre-IPO securities amongst venture capital firms, which is uh, not something that really happens outside of Excel. So it's, it's a very good way where you don't have to deal with the legacy products. Now looking at the legacy, and this is where my firm comes in, we're looking at clearing for exchange traded derivatives initially in equity indices. I think you're going to see um, an initial thing, and I'm a bit biased here, I'll be honest, um, you'll see an initial take up on products where you get an immediate benefit and products that have a short maturity. And the reason I think that maturity is very important is you have to renew these products. So as a company, a CFO that's looking at doing an IPO for my company, I only do an IPO once maybe twice um, for my company. Um, and then subsequently, I only issue new stock on that medium every once in a while. Now, given this is all in post-trade, that's very important. If I look at something like a bond that has a maturity of five or 10 years, which means I issue them quite frequently. Some companies do this on a daily basis. Now, derivatives, especially exchange-traded derivatives, only last three to six months on average, which means I'm doing thousands of these a day if I'm a very active user, uh, like a bank which means I can make that allocation choice as a COO every once in a while, maybe every day. On multiple chances a day, I can say this works or this doesn't. So if I see an immediate benefit, I can pick that up. I think all in all, um, the, the major adoption will really start in about three to five years. We'll start to see some green shoots before, and all these investments need to be made now as the technology is maturing, as regulations are starting to understand and grapple with this, and as people really understand where the benefits are and aren't. So what we see the benefits for blockchain are really at three levels. Um, the first level is what you hear a lot about. Um, we can effectively remove the idea of reconciliation if implemented properly. Um, this means you and I come into an agreement, we put that agreement into this very secure system, and the secure system will tell us what our obligations are depending on what that agreement is over time. Uh, that means that you and I don't have to go back and check our own records, and we can leave the records here and trust them. 
Um, the second thing that's somewhat related to this is it's very easy to manage how much of something there is in a system, how much of a particular asset, how much of a particular risk exists in those systems. Um, if you put this into a blockchain, you can effectively uh, reduce the amount of time and effort that you need to spend producing reportings to make sure that you have that, the right amount in there, or if that risk needs to be adjusted, a regulator could bolt into the side of this and take a look. Now the third part, this is where we're very interested and where we're aiming at, is a blockchain effectively can become a market infrastructure behind other market service providers, either an FMI or a bank, that is extremely default um, remote. It's very robust because if you have hundreds or thousands of providers on this, if any one of them were to disappear, the integrity of the rest of the system would continue. Now, if you imagine one of these users and providers on top of it was a financial markets infrastructure, well, everything and who owned everything is still out in existence. We can continue if we find somebody else to now step in and manage this business. Thank you very much.